Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Snoo with the Crew, episode one, with Adam Gatchel. Hello. Ross Murphy. Hello. And me, Chris Quinton. We're going to be looking at some movie news and discussing what's coming in 2017. And cue intro music. So, what's <laughs> new with you, Adam? What's new with me? Um, well, I'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, I've been to the 2080 40th anniversary convention. 40th anniversary? Yeah. Does that mean I'm nearly 40? Yeah. Shit. <laughs> What about you, Ross? What's new with you? I'm currently stuck in video game purgatory, but I think I might touch on that a bit later on when I tell you what I've been snooming. Snooming? Consuming. Consuming. Yeah, consuming. Amazing. Okay. And I am very much looking forward to John Wick 2 at the cinema tomorrow after watching John Wick 1 last night. Although I did tell the missus that uh, I'd let her choose because it's Valentine's Day, isn't it? Oh, yeah. That's quite romantic of me, I think. Yeah. You know. Well, she choose John Wick too. See, that'll train spot him too, I think. <laughs> Either way, I'm on a winner. I know she's not going to choose bloody Fifty Shades of Bullshit, so Excellent. that's all right. Fifty Shades of right. Darkness. Anyway, right. What a, what a week for Marvel, eh, Adam? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> so, <laughs> stuff that's been happening with Marvel this week, it's, uh, there's loads and loads of stuff going on. We've had a new Iron Fist trailer. Yeah, which was amazing. Really, My really. My favourite character in Marvel, so I'm looking forward to that anyway. Awesome stuff. Thanos confirmed as the main character for Infinity War. I think we already knew that, didn't we? Not really. We knew he was the arch-villain, but oh. they're because they've been talking about this problem with their uh, villains, where they, they sort of wipe them out after every episode, and they didn't get a chance to really sort of form them well and stuff and they are apparently going to make him the main dude like an anti-hero they've kind of built him up in the background but to actually have him as the main character in the film and the good guys kind of being the bad guys well sorry he's the protagonist of the movie yeah sorry that's yeah. The point, yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. right okay yeah so i think that's a great it. idea that's what they should have done with suicide squad they should have had Batman as actually like the bad guy and had the bad guys as the heroes fighting him. No, well, they should but have they done didn't. Suicide Squad. Just, just not make that movie. Just can it. Yeah. <laughs> Take it outside and shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, old yeller. Um, yeah, there was an in shoot promo video for uh, Infinity War, which was pretty damn cool as well. Yeah, it was nice, nice to sort of see and hear what they've been planning, see little nuggets of the sets and stuff like that. Some really nice insights as to what's going on. Thor with a different weapon, did you pick yeah, up on that? Yeah, yeah. there was a lot of interesting visuals in that and uh, quite a lot of stuff from the different actors. Robert Downey Jr. saying we're at the start and I'm looking forward to a year of fun filming this. So, Is this yeah. all official stuff? Or yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it came out a couple uh, of days ago. Drone footage. No, no, like drone that. footage. No. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, um, some it's, long it's not some teenager with a drone just trying to catch. Telescopic lenses and they're like, no. oh, look, that's no, good. It's 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 sure. I'm, I'm, assuming, two arms. I'm assuming it's um, a featurette that will probably be on the Doctor Strange Blu-ray. Oh, that's um, how you see Coming out Blu-rays, next month, is it? I think, I think it's something that's probably going to be on there, but it's they've put it out on YouTube officially, so right, okay. it's not yeah. like, you know, I think it's just one of the bonus things that will be on there anyway. I'll tell you the best way to get a drone in to the set, get a Thanos model and stick it on the top on his little floating <laughs> throne, and, just, and I think it's part of the stuff that's going on, oh, it's just Thanos, that's, it's the Thanos puppet, hang on, wait, he's, he's all mocap, isn't he? <laughs> Bloody drones. Um, <laughs> so we'll fix that. We'll, we'll cut that out. Um, I'm, I'm leaving it in. And Legion. Legion episode one. Did you catch it, guys? What the hell is Legion? Legion, Tell me about Legion, Legion is like one of Marvel's strongest mutant characters and part of the X Men franchise. That's the one. But as it's a TV series. It's a TV series. Made by who? Fox. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So whether or not it will remain good is another matter. The first episode is very strong, though. 
really strong. So well, well, in theory, there could be um, cameos from any of the Fox X Men. In theory, yes. Um, Likelihood, I doubt. Well, they are making an X Men TV show, mm. so they could intertwine them. See, we spoke about this in a missing episode eight zero, even. This whole fucking making TV things out of movies, it's just part and dead of all. I'm just not really that bothered. It's a fresh thing, though. I don't Is think it? it's Yeah, they haven't done the Legion in a film yet, so I think it might work. I think the X-Men right. thing <coughs> is going to be fresh. Or when they're doing the Runaways as well, aren't they? So yes. they could all tie into each other, although I don't think, if I remember rightly, the Runaways has any mainstream villains or heroes in it does it not that i know of no from what i remember it's a group of unknown teen characters with abilities and the villains are their parents yeah because they find out all the mums and dads <coughs> are all like villains and they decide oh mum and dad shouldn't be doing all this bad shit we'll stop them yeah so across between heroes and kick ass yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Kick ass heroes. Um, <clears throat> I think they stole the idea from them. What else was there for Marvel? There was a Guardians of the Galaxy trailer. You're not going to watch that, Ross? No, no need. I'm sold on that movie. I, uh, I think I seen saw the like scissor teaser. Wheel, teaser. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, it's thematically the same. I'm down with that. I think it looks awesome. I, yeah. I did watch the trailer, I must I, admit. And... I'm a trailer addict. I can't help it. Nice bit of humour and like jokes that <coughs> we, you know, we, we've talked about between us before about trailers and um, whether or not they're including bits and bobs in the film. There's bits in the trailers that could very well not appear in the film and I think it still gives you a, a nice kind of um, good feel as to, as to how the film's going to turn out. Definitely. It's got the vibe of the first one, but more chaotic, and I'm well up for that. Everyone loves a bit of chaos. Yeah. Ocean's 8. Does that float your boat, anyone? I've seen the original, and I've seen the remake, and then this is now off on a tangent. All female cast, led by Sandra Bullock and Kate Blanchett, oh, and Rihanna, off of singing. <laughs> off of singing. <laughs> Yeah, like, it's supposed to be she's, Sandra Bullock's the sister of the blokey that surname is Ocean. Danny so, Ocean, yeah. Yeah, so... So, <laughs> hang on, do these movies, are they counting down? So they're going to stop making them when they get to Ocean's 1? Although the sequel... I don't know. Was was it called Ocean's 10? The No, it was Ocean's 12, wasn't it? The second one. So Ocean's the 11, one. Ocean's 12. And then this one's... Ocean's was, there wasn't there a third one as well? Oh, I don't know. I'm lost now. I've only seen one, so... It is the fourth, it's definitely the fourth movie. Definitely. Oh, okay. We, we, we are missing an Ocean's movie. If anyone sees it, could you just... Let us know yeah, what it's like. Leave it in the comments or something. That'd be great. <laughs> something else you might be more interested in, Ross, is um, Kevin Smith is planning a, a reboot of Jay and Silent Bob. Yes, that is correct. Kevin Smith is doing it. I think the title of the movie is called Jay and Silent Bob The Reboot. Jay and Silent Bob are going to Hollywood to reboot Jay and Silent Bob to to make a Jay and Silent Bob the movie too. So it's a movie making movie inside the movie. Yeah, uh, Jay and Silent Jay and Silent Bob uh, Strikes Back is a movie about stopping the production of a movie. Ah, so this um, one is them trying to get a film to be made. Yeah, or. I can't actually remember, but so it's it kind of the opposite of strikes. Back. They might be doing the same thing again. They might be stopping a reboot <laughs> happening. Oh, amazing! But it <laughs> it came about because I believe somebody from the Clerks cast pulled out, and Clerks three is not getting made now. Yeah, I saw that as well. And actually, yeah. Kevin Smith doesn't own uh, the only thing he owns because he sold them all because mm. for money because he would. He the only thing he owns is Jet and Silent Bob. Yeah, he doesn't actually own like more rats. He he's got a TV series for more rats, but nobody wants to make it. Um, Clerks he can't make because he can't get the cast back together, and uh, so he's just started writing a script for James Silent Bob's the reboot. Mm-hmm. And let's be honest, so they're the best two characters in the yeah. whole Vioskew universe. So like James Silent Bob strikes back 
just a fucking fantastic film. It's so funny. It's just funny from start to finish. And I like Suzanne, the orangutan. Yeah, Will Ferrell is in it, and it's like early Will Ferrell, and he's Scott in it. Sorry, I just, I just Ferrell. I just, <laughs> I always funny, thought it was Will Ferrell. Ferrell, I always say. But oh, so we're all saying it differently. Oh, Amazing. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that just that he's, just stopped um, me in my tracks. Yeah. Uh, he's funny in it as well. Yeah, he's brilliant. Yeah, he was. And that's then, the first on thing the DVD. It's fucking him. brilliant. He's like ad libs like though. There's mm. just so much stuff cut out. And he's just pricking about. Yeah, that's the first thing I ever saw. Um, saw him in, and then he was in loads of stuff after that. Look. What yeah. year were were they released? The first movies. Yeah. What was the first one? Cl- um, Clerks was the first one. The Clerks, more rats, Chase Amy, Dogma, Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back, and then he then went Clerks off too. Of, but he do, yeah. he went off and made like Jersey Girl. So what year was yeah. Clerks? You remember? Ninety four. Yeah, Clerks was made in nineteen ninety four. That came from my massive brain. Of stored information, <laughs> or as you call not it, the internet, an iPad connected <laughs> to the internet. Do you guys remember the original Dune movie by any chance? Yes, yes, Dennis Villeneuve. I think that's right, it's probably not. <laughs> Sorry, Dennis, um, is confirmed as the director of the, of the new Dune movie. I don't know when it's due out, but I'm quite excited. Yeah, I'm up for it. I I'm quite a fan of the first one. I, I really I... like the uh, two Westworld, uh, Westwood Studio video games. Oh, Dune 2, particularly. You've not played Dune? Oh, no, uh, they're very, very good. What yeah. sort of style game are they? Dune is, the original, is more like a point click adventure is the wrong way to describe it, but do you remember some of the old, um, do you remember a game called It Came From The Desert? Yeah. And one like The Rocketeer, but it wasn't called The Rocketeer. Yeah. And they're sort of almost like like these quite cinematic things. The original yeah. Dune was similar to that, you know, go and have dialogue conversations with people, oh, but not okay. in that very obvious point and click. Yeah, yeah. Dune 2 was the very first real time strategy game made by Westwood, Westwood Studios. Oh, right. Keeps okay. saying Westworld, because so, it's so fucking good. <laughs> so uh, I must have only played 2 or Dune 2, two yeah. or onwards yeah. or something. From that era, I also had like Dune on. Uh, VHS, and then the really good Dune video game came out, and that was a real time, like much more modern, like 1994 maybe. Real, and that was almost like a sequel to the movie. Uh, okay. So yeah, I'm part, but I've never read the books because I had their their tomes. Tomes. Yes. They're quite large tomes. Right. So they make Game of Thrones look like small books. Okay. I well, I have seen them. Uh, I've got an audio book sitting around somewhere, which I've got to admit doesn't look that big because you know. It's just a file. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Stranger Things. Did you guys see Stranger Guess Things? Guess what I didn't do. You didn't watch Stranger Things? No. I didn't watch the trailer. Oh, no. I don't oh. watch trailers anymore. It's the most liberating thing in the world. Oh, doesn't geez. give me much to talk about on a Monday night, but um, <laughs> it's just really nice and not committing to something to the point where you go, I don't need to see that trailer. I don't think they're going to be able to give so much away with a, a, a really super epically long TV show. That's, well, I'd say epically yeah, long it's not ten that, episodes. It's just I don't need... I, I just hit this point where I just do not need to see it. Star Wars Episode Eight trailer, I'll probably watch it about 15 times. Or like, <laughs> everything else, I'm just like, no, I'm quite happy with that. You don't really need to I don't to know. See I think it. it's when it's a TV series where all the episodes come out at once and it's quite short, eight to ten episodes, having a trailer kind of makes sense. When yeah. it's a weekly, comes out every week, it seems a bit weird to have a trailer. A lot of the channels where it's week by week, it just seems like, well, are you going to have a trailer for every episode? And then that kind of gives the story away gradually. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. It's, that is like choosing little elements of each and every episode every single week, whereas... Because they drop it all as one big bomb, don't they? Yeah. You know. Um, Chuck. And and the thing is, with the first trailer for um, Stranger Things, the the first trailer only had stuff from the first four episodes in, so it didn't give away the greater plot of the story. If you've not seen Stranger Things, I recommend you go and watch it right now because it's very very good, and uh, I cannot wait for the second season. To be fair, I think it's it's one of the best TV shows I've seen in the past few years. Did you see the Rick and Morty Season 3 showrunner update, Adam? Yes. That was pretty hilarious. It was a wrap. 
I'm going to link it below, I think, just because it's worth a yeah, watch. Yeah, it was very good. I think most things that we're mentioning here in, in, in the news we'll put in, in the description below as little links so you can go and have a look. Yeah, definitely. But what I'm not going to include is this bollocks. Friday the 13th reboot. Thank fuck it's been cancelled. Yay. Way. Was it being done by, f- what is it, four? I don't know. Uh, I don't care. <laughs> all the horror remakes recently seem to be done by Michael Bay's company. Mm. He has like a company that remakes all of the horror films. Doesn't he mostly make films for Jerry Bruckheimer? Used to. I don't know if that's they're still linked as tightly anymore. Because obviously he's been doing Transformers and Turtles. Not that either of those are any good. But really? Yeah. I enjoyed the Turtles movies. I quite enjoyed the Turtles movies, except right. for Crank. No, but seriously, that. like, how... No. No, no, no. no. Stop talking about one... things Adam loves. No, 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 no. It's just one major issue I have with it. Like, <clears throat> it's fine remaking it. It's fine making them ginormous. It's fine making them really annoying. But don't have it that Splinter finds a book on ninjutsu in the sewer and then becomes a master from a book and then teaches the teaches them how to do it. That doesn't even make sense. No, no that film makes sense. Do. It's not supposed to make sense, mate. I would take my kids to see it. And that's fine. I'd rather take them to see something better like the Lego movie. So yeah. I mean, it's actually not pandering and talking down to them, but actually going, look, this is a good story. This is how things work. Here's some funny bits. Because that's the problem for me with a lot of these films. They, The makers talk down at the kids. And you don't need to do that with the Turtles. The Turtles is a very simple story. Don't confuse it by making it's it very precious. bollocks. Very precious to Adam. Madam. Just a little bit, because <laughs> they've never pounded Don't get before. him started, he, don't get him started on Ghostbusters as well. <laughs> God. Anyway, so yeah, that was bollocks. Uh, they are still remaking the fucking Halloween, though. Uh, again, uh, Halloween's yeah. technically... Didn't they remake that a little while ago? But oh, yeah. I don't know how Hasn't many times they've re- restarted it all. Sorry, did we say a night... Friday the 13th has been, been cancelled. Yeah. Yeah. Have they not already rebooted that? What, Friday the 13th? Yes. Did they not make a remake of the original Friday 13th? Yeah. They yeah, did, right, yeah. didn't they? So didn't is this they? a reboot yeah. of a reboot? Yeah. Halloween's sort of been rebooted. Yeah, well. that was done by um, uh, Rob Zombie, wasn't it? The, the best, the Halloween H2O was quite good, though. Because yeah, that well, was yeah, a there reboot. Been one well, it wasn't since, really so. a reboot. It was such a, it was a, because Halloween sort of went off on a tangent anyway, so that Halloween H2O was actually... Set went, later. Set, like, 20 years later, but actually the continuity was it became, like, Halloween 2.5 because yeah, the other yeah. two just went off completely off topic. It's a good move, that. So that but, yeah, I like, think Rob Zombie remade well, Halloween a little while ago, like, rebooted it, and it was darker and stuff, and now they're talking about rebooting it again. Stop, it's just, stop. Like, Stop rebooting things, especially but, things that Adam loves. But it's horror movies, isn't it? They always do yeah, well. Yeah. They always make money. And they're, they, the, they're usually quite cheap to make. They're the only movies that don't fall into this category of it's got to be a $7 million um, indie movie or a $150 million. Yeah, they fit in that nice... They're the only $20, million. $30 million movie still being made, aren't they? Because they release them for four weeks in the winter and people go and watch yeah. it. Yeah, that's why you end up with so many no, shitty horror movies right. in January, I suppose. Yeah. The month where movies go to die. <laughs> or win awards. Or win awards. <laughs> I'll tell you what, should win an award. Don't breathe. Oh, that was fantastic. That's that's bloody awesome. Yeah, movie. I, I wasn't sure, and I went to see that, thinking it was going to be rubbish, and actually it was really good. I put it on at about... Half past ten at night, just as I've gone to bed, thinking I'll just watch the first half and I'll watch the other half tomorrow. No bollocks. All the way through, bang. <laughs> Couldn't stop it. It was bloody good. And I'm not I'm not one for like horror films or slasher films or anything like that, but that that was a really good, tense, like uncomfortable film. Twisty turny. Yeah, mm. really well written. Like there was bits in it that were a little bit like cheesy horror film, but not enough to take you out of the story and make you not like it. Mm. So yeah, it was definitely yeah, that's definitely worth watching. Cool. We'll um we'll pick up this subject again October the thirty first. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. this year because I like a good horror film, but I don't like bad horror films. Uh, so whole... we'll do a whole podcast on horror films. Yeah. Right, last bit of news for any manga fans out there. If you don't know, um, 
you're very much looking forward to Ghost in the Shell this year, uh, Battle Angel Alicia is being made as a live action movie as well, with uh, Robert Rodriguez in the director's chair. Mm-hmm. What do you reckon, Adam? I'm intrigued. I don't know that manga personally, but with... Do you not? No, but with him involved, that sounds like it could be quite interesting. Did you ever see it, Ross? No. No? But... Um... Do you want a little breakdown of the premise? Yes, please. Okay, so there's this little robot. Her name is Alicia, and she's a battle droid, but she doesn't necessarily know it, and some professor finds her on the scrap heap, and it's, you know, post-apocalyptic, everything's all pretty shitty, and there's just scrap everywhere, and, and this professor dude finds her in the scrap and fixes her up a little bit, and boom, she's a full working kill droid. So it's a bit like Astro Boy, but more violent. It was quite humanist. Oh, okay. In its in its values, but it was very good, very very good. Short circuit meets Chappy meets Astro uh, Boy. Ed two oh nine. Look at you, Ian. Ed two oh nine. Yeah, I don't know. Why I said that. I normally call him Ed two oh nine. But he actually is called Ed two oh nine in the movie, isn't he? Is he? I'm not going to yeah. argue with you on that one. Anyway, so uh, Christoph Waltz is going to be playing the Professor. You're going to have uh, Rosa Salazar as Alicia, who's the girl from Scorch Trials, and Jennifer Connolly, who I know from Labyrinth, but where do you know her from? She's in The Rocketeer, but she's also in Requiem for a Dream, and she's a heroine. She's a heroin addict, yeah, and then at the end of the film, she, just to get extra money, she goes to this place where there's these horrible, like, middle-aged men, and they just pay her to fuck this other woman who's also probably a hero addict, and they get this huge giant black double and dildo, and then the last thing you see is the movie go, how about some ass to ass? And that's right. it. And then... And she was in the Hulk. Oh, yeah, she was in the Hulk. <laughs> yeah. Not doing anything with the dildo. No. <laughs> anyway. Uh, one more bit of movie news I just realised. Uh, Alicia Vikander is playing... Uh, Lara Croft in the Tomb Raider reboot. Ooh. But it might be last week's news, you probably already know. Tomb Raider reboot. To be honest, that's probably a reboot I can get behind because the last ones with old uh, goggle eyes were awful. <laughs> old goggle eyes. Old goggle eyes. <laughs> yes. I don't um, like her. I don't think she's very good at acting. In some films, she's terrible. I like her in Gone in 60 Seconds. That's it. <laughs> It's a reboot of Lara Croft, like Lara Croft has recently in been the games. rebooted in the games, where she's cool. young and she's not very experienced at raiding tombs, and the, both those two recent Tomb Raider games are phenomenal. So, yeah, there's uh, set shots of her, like, prancing around. Doing so, that. is that from test footage, or they started filming? No, no, I think it was... Uh, I know, they have started filming, but I, just, I don't know, it was a 185mm lens on a drone or something, I think, probably. Right. But it has the potential to become the first good video game movie. Well, that's a good point. We've really not had one, have we? No, there's been good movies about video games, but there's never been any good no. video game movies. There was that bit in Doom. The one bit with yeah. the gun. Yeah. Or the, the first-person <laughs> first perspective. Yeah. Bit. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the oh, only the game, game that they've ever done a good movie of was that Going Postal. Going Postal? Is it called that? What, Terry Pratchett? No, not Going Postal. It's just Postal. Postal. Yeah, Postal. Yeah. But, yeah. It's, but the, the phrase is Going Postal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that film was great fun. Ridiculous. Starts with two guys talking about how many virgins they get when they crash the planes into the Twin Towers and then they change their mind because they realise after phoning their boss they're not going to get as many virgins. And then the crew and the passengers break into the cockpit and cause them to accidentally crash into the building anyway. And that's how the film starts for some reason. And then it goes on to be about Postman. I've played a game called Postal and all I can remember in Postal is you can set fire to people and then piss on them to put them out and then hit people. Yeah, it's basically, basically that as a film. What are we talking about this week? Our, our subject for the week is... What are we looking forward to in 2017? Nice, easy subject. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll break you guys in nice and break you in easy. So, what is coming out in 2017, according to the internet? Because I don't really watch trailers, as we've already established. The most important films coming out this year is definitely Star Wars Episode Eight: The really? Last Jedi. Yep. Ooh. Why because, do you think that's the most important? Because it's Star Wars, and Star Wars is the most important thing. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, and I can't believe it's nearly March and there hasn't been a trailer yet. True. Okay. Um, that's a good thing, I suppose. 
Were there trailers? They were by this time, weren't they, yeah. for episode seven? I don't understand how they don't just go at the end of whatever Star Wars movie is on the, the cinema at Christmas, there is the trailer for the next one. Like they did, I'm sure, did they do that for The Lord of the Rings or did I dream that? I don't know, I've never seen any of those. What? Wow. So weird. I hate dragons, I hate wizards, I hate warlocks, I hate... There aren't any stupid things like that. I the don't second do one fantasy. is the only one I think has got really good pacing all the way through. Third one oh, was too long. End, oh, how many endings? 75. It's about <laughs> eight. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I've never watched them. That sounds horrendous. But in saying that, you sit there, like I've just done it recently, You because um, my girlfriend wanted to watch it and I haven't watched them since I came back from New Zealand. And we watched extended cuts that are even more ridiculously long. And even though the last one outstays its welcome by 40 minutes, you still get to the end of it and go, the whole entirety of it was an absolute masterpiece. It's just, it's still incredible now. The effects still look amazing. And it's a complete watershed moment in cinema. Pixelated dialogue's a bit of a problem on that. Um, Have you noticed that? At all. No, no, I don't. I've watched. I've got the extended cut on Blu-ray, so I don't know. Have a close look at the Balrog when they're fighting. When Gandalf's fighting him in the first one, and there's loads of some of the effects are really pixelated, really badly. I like, still won't be watching them. Like they've right. rendered it and then zoomed in on it a little bit too much, and it's just like, right. whoops. We've that's in the final cut. Whoops. One movie that's coming out this year. Oh yes, so, Star Wars. Right, Guardians. Who's going to watch Guardians of yes. Galaxy Volume 2? Of course we are. Of course we are. It'll probably be as Lego Batman. As... Already yeah. out, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to go and see it. Yeah, yeah. it's getting very good reviews. So, right, yeah. it, apparently the Justice League movie is coming out this year. Is that actually coming out? It I is. Don't care. And you should go and watch the, the Waldo Blokey's weird trailer. If the you've what? not seen it. And uh, Aldo Jones. Go and watch Aldo Jones's weird trailers. Go and watch them all. Okay. They well, they do what they say on the tin. They're fucking if weird. Spider Man's coming out in July, does that mean Thor has is the autumn Marvel movie? Yeah. So yeah, they're, they're doing three about. films a year now. They've... Well, no, because that Spider Man one's a link between um, so Marvel it's and Sony. Sony so, yeah. But it's not officially a Marvel Studios movie. Yeah. Is it? No. Blade Runner looks really good, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, I love Blade Runner. I think I'm very much looking forward to that. I think the thing is with Blade Runner, what makes Blade Runner so special is its art direction, its look and its feel, and they mm. captured it perfectly in the trailer, I think. What about Alien? What's it called? Alien Covenant. Covenant. Again, I think uh, as somebody who doesn't really watch trailers, the uh, Prometheus made me just go, oh, just, sorry. Prometheus was a train wreck. Yeah. But... It did have subject matter that was really good. I thought there yeah. were lovely elements to it, and it looked pretty bloody awesome. Alien Covenant looks more like an alien film, though, rather than Prometheus, exactly, which yeah. was not an alien film, and then chuck one in at the end. Do we know that um, Aliens and Blade Runner are yes. theoretically in the same universe? The, the spaceships and, and craft that are flying about in Blade Runner and the spaceship in Alien use the same docking system program. To- yeah. Did you know where available Stephen King makes all of his stuff in the same universe? I, I didn't did know, know that, that, actually. Did you watch 11 Yes. No. Right, so I read the book. He goes to the town where it happens, mm. and they talk about the incident with the kids going missing. Ooh. And then, so I didn't oh, know this. Okay. I haven't read a lot of Stephen King. I've read yes. a fair bit, but... Um, but, yeah, you go, you go, you fall down a complete internet rabbit. But then that means how, that, like Stephen King is literally he, he's he's the biggest fanboy of his own work, and he will do. Do they link to his like Richard that. Bachman stuff then, like Shawshank and um, the other stuff he's written under that name? Do if they, they don't, that, there's or? a good chance that there's a certain movie that's coming out this year that could combine literally everything that he's written because there are no boundaries with it. And that's uh, Black Tower. Dark Tower. Dark, Dark Tower. Tower. Yes. Oh, okay. Which is, at some point or another has got some kind of interdimensional And that's out this year. Riff thing going on. Yeah. However, okay. I think the movie, if I'm not mistaken in saying I think the movie's set after all of the events of his books and things. Right, uh, okay. Which could well be an ever infinite, never ending story. Never right. ending story. <laughs> 
Anyway, oh, just to make okay. it more complicated. Um, we better bash through some of these as quickly as well. The Fate of the Furious, Fast Eight. Oh, no. I've not seen any of them. They're brilliant. Watch them. Seriously, they don't they start really to take themselves they, a little less seriously as they've gone on. There's quite a high barrier to entry at the start because they they are pretty bad and they get worse. But then they so they sort of go one, two, three goes downhill. But then they just hit this point where they just go. They become so irreverent of themselves. And yeah. That they just get better and better. Because I've heard the, the later ones and, are like, more just, interesting. Yeah, five, six, seven. Just yeah. they're just brilliant. And I only found this out like a year ago, maybe even I watched all seven mm. of them back to back. But I will probably go and see eight at the cinema. Like, that's how much fun cool. it will be had. Don Kirk looks really good. Yeah, but you don't really like Chris Nolan, do you? No, but I think Chris Nolan has an opportunity here to direct a, a factual piece of uh, story here and not... Is it his flux of fantasy that, that piss you off? Stupid, irritating bit of time travel in or something. I think I don't think I've ever seen a Chris Nolan movie that hasn't... One of his movies, not when he's making a studio piece like Batman. Everyone's like, oh, he's just an auteur. He's so good. He's not. He's just one of those people who puts a twist in his movie. Well, I've said it before, Inception's based on a Donald Duck comic, so... Explain that again. There's a Donald Duck comic, and... Oh, no, sorry, a Scrooge McDuck comic, and Donald Duck and Huey, Dewey and Louie go and get help from a doctor who puts hit them inside the dreams of the Beagles, the bad guys, who are already inside the dreams of Scrooge McDuck, trying to get the codes for his safe and stuff mm. like that. So he's literally Inception in... a Disney comic from I think it was the mid nineties, maybe late nineties. Inception, induction, induction. I don't know, but yeah. Anyway, what else have we got covered? Ghost, <laughs> Ghost in the Shell. Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. Definitely. Well, in Wonder Woman, the trailers have been very impressive. Yeah, those nasty little rumours are saying that it's not going to be good, and I kind of hope it is. For DC I kind of yeah, I kind of hope this one is because the other DC stuff's been poor yeah. at best. Transformers, The Last Night. No, I mean, I they, at least there's one thing we can say about Transformers movies. They've Consistent. been consistently shot. <laughs> um, the new the Planet of the Apes. Ooh, Planet of the Apes news. The director mm. is doing mm. the Batman. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. Right. I think that's a pretty damn good, it's good choice. Yeah, it's good, it's good he's good choice. Not, he's not doing anything because, you know, obviously the, the latest Planet of the Apes has, has wrapped up and um, so he's got a bit of free time. What what nobody wants to see is a reboot featuring Tom Cruise of The Mummy, do they? Is that this year? <sighs> yeah, yeah but the rumours are that it's it's The Mummy but it's they're going to be doing their own franchise of franchise. the Universal Monsters and that he is actually going to be playing a vampire. It's a franchise that was supposed to have been kicked off with that awful, uh, I think it was the Frankenstein movie that was released by the while back, two, yeah, which, was rubbish. which is a bit of an incredible Hulk. Let's just yeah. brush that under the carpet type affair. Yeah. That's not actually oh, part of the franchise. There's a new Kingsman coming out. Oh, yeah, there is. Yes. Yes. I, I'm, I'm really confused that. about that because I've is, got the comic is it the Mark original. Winner? And the comic of the original is... Is it a Mark Miller comic? Yeah. And it's, it's like brilliant. It was from Clint magazine, which was a British release comic that he did, which had various stories by him. Mark and Miller's comic as well, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It had him and various other people releasing comics in it. It had something by Jimmy Carr. It had something by the um, uh, Scottish comedian, uh, Frankie Boyle. It had a comic strip by him um, and one by Jonathan Ross. So there's a lot of British guys getting involved in writing comics for it. And The Kingsman, which was in it, was really good. The first film is kind of almost the same, but really different. Like the the basic storyline is the same, but so much has changed. Um, so I'm intrigued to how they're going to do a second. Uh, I enjoyed the first. That's all. I yeah, the first was great. That bloody shirt scene. <sighs> My lord. Yeah. If you've not seen it, oh, it's worth if you're into worth Mr. Dis- if you're into Mr. Darcy, don't watch that. Oh God, please do. <laughs> um, so right, there's a Power Rangers movie coming out this year. Oh yeah, which but nobody looks, cares. Kind of nobody in this room probably cares kind of, about because you know we're too old for Power Rangers. The trouble is with it, they are they're making all the Power Rangers like like Iron Man kind of but the kids have all got their powers when they haven't got the suits on and stuff as well yeah mixing up the lore a bit I'm interested to see how they do it just because I know that when I was younger I was still too old for Power Rangers but I remember it coming out and it being 
a massive thing and it's still going now. They've got so many different versions of it that have happened and kids still seem to love it. So it'd be interesting to see if they can do a film that's not as bad as the one they did years ago with the uh, Apocalypse from X-Men Apocalypse in it. I can't remember what the character's name was back in that Harry to me, but he looks exactly the same as Apocalypse from the X-Men film. <laughs> one, of the films, mean, yeah. one of the films I'm most excited <clears throat> to see this year is Valerian. I am very yeah. much looking forward to it. Because What's our director's name? It's Luke Besson. What's the one? It, honestly, I... It reminds me so much of Fifth Element. It looks well, I think so that's what he wanted to make, but couldn't, fun and so couldn't get anyone on side so with doing that comic, so he did a, Fifth Element, and it's now pretty, he's done enough, he's convinced people that, yeah, this is a good idea, let me do it. It's a pretty big, sprawling comic, isn't it? That's, yeah, yeah, it goes yeah, on for quite a long time. So we're looking at a possible franchise for him as well, aren't we? So. And to be honest, if it's anything like Fifth Element in style and substance, um, but follows that comic correctly, then I'm well in. I'm, I'm really up for it. It looks amazing. It sounds, the, the audio and the music and the sound from the trailer alone is just like, yeah, seems good. I'll watch it. I'll enjoy it. I'll go through these really quickly, okay. apart from the one at the end, uh, but these are obviously weighted towards the end of the year. There is what looks like a follow-up to The Ring called Rings. That's already out. It's getting really bad reviews. Oh, right, okay. Insidious Chapter 4. Don't care. Insidious. No. Saw Legacy. Oh, for uh, God's sake. World War Z 2. It's been cancelled. Amityville The Awakening. Oh, wow. See so, yeah. And uh, Amityville yeah. The Awakening. Yeah. But the most interesting one out of all of those is what is being touted as the third part of the Cloverfield trilogy. It's called the God Particle. What was wow. the second part of Cloverfield? Ten, uh, Cloverfield Lane. Ten, yeah. If you've not seen it, that's definitely worth a watch as well. Is that connected to Cloverfield? Yeah. So God Particle no. is the synopsis: is astronaut must fight for their lives after making a terrifying discovery in outer space. I like horror in space. Okay, so you're probably going to yeah. like Life as well. That's out this year as well. With Jake Gyllenhaal and your favourite actor, Mr. Deadpool himself. Ryan Reynolds. You're a bit hard for Ryan Reynolds, aren't you? Yeah, I'm just, I'm okay for him. I think he's a very handsome man. <laughs> him, so, yeah. Him, him and Chris Pratt. Just, yeah, just happily see them do a film together. While we're on the subject of Ryan Reynolds, um, Deadpool, the, mm. uh, the, the end credits scene. Ferris Bueller scene. Ferris Bueller, thank you very much. I mentioned that the other day to somebody and they said, Who the fuck is Ferris Bueller? What? I was going to punch him, but it was the missus. <laughs> <laughs> but she's old enough to know that as well. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> i tell you what, an alternative film I'm very much looking forward to this year is Headshot. Have you guys seen The Raid? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's the same <clears throat> dude. I think it might be the same director. Well, so right. lots, lots of the same... Um, Kind of choreography and yeah. fast paced martial arts looking pretty fucking slick. Something else I'm looking forward to is Skull Island. Yeah, I'm interested. I, I don't know because obviously they're going to be doing their own franchise, aren't they? Yep. So they're going to cross it over with Godzilla. Yep. Um, Which I think is an age old thing anyway, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, they've done it before in the past. So I'm interested to see how they do it and whether it's going to be as good as I want it to be. The trailer looks like it could be good fun. It doesn't look like it's just a reboot of King Kong. Fuck, let's hope not. Yeah, it looks like it's got its own story. Well, actually, that's not fair to say. No, there's, there's, yeah, a reboot in King Kong is fine. So, is it a racist Peter Jackson's? Yeah, yeah. Which I don't want to talk about, but yeah. <laughs> there, to be honest, there is probably a cracking fan edit of Kong. All you need to do is cut out the big half an hour of bollocks with dinosaurs and bugs. That's, That's what I mean. It. There's probably a cracking, like, um, really good fan edit out there. So people have made fan edits of the um, Star Wars prequels. Then I've got it. to watch those, actually, very soon. I've, I'll see that they're available to, to download. I saw, I saw a fan edit of um, Judge Dredd a little while ago. Oh, yeah. Um, Do you know my fan edit of Judge Dredd is you leave it exactly alone because it's fucking brilliant, that film. Which what, one? Stallone in? No, the new one. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean the one with Stallone in. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I would have said Dredd. <laughs> yeah, sorry. The, oh, sorry. Judge Dredd, yeah, with Stallone in. Someone did a fan edit of that and basically he never takes his helmet off and you get very little of Rob Schneider. Okay. So it's a much better film. Yeah, it must be about 45 <laughs> minutes long, though. Uh, it's about 52 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love the fact that they stick an ABC warrior in that film. Yeah. It's, I love ABC warriors. They yeah. always had the best artists and it was just such a bloody good strip. Which brings us nicely 
into what the hell have you been doing this week, Adam? I've been at 2000 AD 40th anniversary um, Thrill Power Festival up in London at the Novotel Hotel in Hammersmith and got an awesome amount of stuff for my money. Um, get a load of free stuff. What did you get? What did you get? What did you get? Um, got some comics, got a graphic novel of some of the best future shock stories. Uh, the t shirt I'm wearing right now. Um, so so you got some bobs. Did you get anything signed? Um, yeah, I got a. Your penis? Uh, no, they wouldn't let me do that. I did ask. Um, John Wagner was not. Did I have a small enough pen? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, bird. Put some lotion on. No, don't. <laughs> no, I don't put lotion on. I dip it in yogurt. Yeah, no, it was really good. I got a couple of prints signed by uh, artists that I like. Had a nice chat with uh, Dave Taylor, who does my favourite drawings of Mega City One. His versions of the city are my favourite when when you see them in the comics. Um, managed to get to ask a few questions to Pat Mills, the writer, um, during one of the talks. And uh, what did he write? Um, he's written. Some of the some of the best things in two thousand AD over the years. He's been involved in quite a lot of it. Um, Strontium Dog. Yeah, Strontium Dog. Uh, he's done some of the Judge Dredd stories as well as the other guys, uh, Carlos Esquera and um, the Blue Soldier dude that was on his own. Rogue Trooper. Rogue Trooper. Um, yeah, there was. Uh, they had all the artists, sort of the main artists, that have done Slain over the years, Slain, and yeah. um, they were doing a chat about Slain and stuff. Pat Mills did a. A whole retrospective. They had the owners of Rebellion, the computer game company who owned 2000 AD, um, and they were the first thing I went and sat down and listened to. So, sorry, just sorry, rewind. Rebellion owned 2000 AD. Yeah. Who yeah. owns Rebellion? Uh, two guys who uh, from I think they're out in based out in Oxford. They basically um, wanted to do interesting games. They've always just made games that they are interested in, um, and. They wanted to do like a few games that involved Dread and Rogue Trooper and stuff. So they found out that all the licensing was, I think from the way they explained it, the licensing was owned by a company in Denmark for all the characters from 2008. Because they'd sold them like years ago when they thought uh, they wouldn't amount to anything. Yeah, possibly. I, I didn't quite understand. It was quite complicated because the company that owned it were sort of part charity based and were part owned by Disney. Right, okay. So they couldn't really do anything with it. So I think they basically kind of went, well, this is a British comic company. It's the best British comic because they both read it since the first one. So they bought the company back and they've been running it since with various editors and they've kind of left them to carry on doing what they do best. And then they just occasionally sort of get involved and do games. And what? Go Why on. have they never asked Rockstar to just make a Mega City one game? They talked about that. They talked about that and they also talked about why there hasn't been a Dread 2 and why there hasn't been a TV series yet, which is interesting. They said that they want to, um, they've had chats with Hollywood, but Hollywood just basically want to go, right, will you give us all the rights and then we'll go and do what we want. And in, I think in one situation, the guy said that there was a conversation going on about doing a rogue trooper film, and he's a blue-skinned alien character. And just before they're about to sign for them to go and do a film, that. no, the uh, Hollywood guy went, "Does he have to be blue?" <laughs> and it was <laughs> like, "Yes." So you're not having the character. So basically, what they've said is, <clears throat> no matter what happens. When it comes to there being a film or a TV series, they want to make sure the right people are involved and that they have various rules. And if those film companies or TV companies won't follow those rules, they don't get the characters because they'd rather something good is made than a load of bad stuff. We've got to talk about Road Trooper because he's an amazing character. Do you know anything about him, Ross? I have read some 2000 movie. Do you remember him? Blue soldier dude, usually out on his own. How Always out on his own. But like members oh. of his squad, they they've got like their personas, or I suppose it's their their, soul. their, their, their memories soul or whatever they digitise. Oh, it's what he turns equipment. in. No. Does it, they come out of him? No. Or does... it, it, they're in his helmet. One's in his helmet. One's so in his So he gun. says, like sniper dude, I need to take this shot, and then uh, mate, he helps. 
the the gun helps him take yeah. decent shots and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah. But they're they're there to be like his buddies. They're his comrades. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, and they did a really good game. Rebellion did a really, really good game without that still played by a lot of people now. Um, which is just really interesting in the way they put that game oh, together. So what a road trip um, game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's on the PC. Um, really good game. Uh, I can't think when it was made. It was quite a long time ago. Oh, right. So, but it still stands up now. That's the great thing about it. Because of the way they do games, it still works. And they said, and they've announced it this morning, they said it on, uh, on Saturday that they've had so many emails from people going, why can't you just do Mega City 1 with Judge Dredd through Rockstar or GTA style? And what they've said now is, same as the movies and film, uh, movies and TV problem that they've had of getting the right people involved. And also because they're doing so well with their Sniper Elite games and they're so busy with their studio, they're opening oh, up... Oh, they're the guys opening, who make Sniper Elite? Yeah. I've yeah. seen the Sniper Elite. Sorry, so they open up, they've opened up their studio and their properties to basically go other game makers, small game makers, big game makers. If you can come up with something that users are stuff okay. um uh, uh, develop something they're interested in having chats with people um so there's more about that um online at the moment like that they've announced on the 2080 website but yeah so they've basically opened up for any characters in 2080 to be turned into a computer game if the right people can show that their idea is gonna not ruin the property not gonna change it in any massive way so it doesn't represent it well because those guys love those comics just as much as the artists the writers and the fans it was a really good weekend absolutely amazing in fact i managed to buy a judge dread figure and um get a model of his bike as well uh, nice. for a certain amount of money and then went to forbidden planet for a break in the middle of the day we popped out for a bit go and get some food popped for the planet and in there it was seven times eight times the price wow so yeah okay. uh, it's actually You're a lot cheaper well. to buy stuff at the convention they did good. prints a lot of the artists were willing to just sign stuff and chat with you they weren't charging you a hundred quid for a signature like at other comic places and stuff so yeah it was really good all around but it was and if you're not into 2000 AD then there's nothing there for you. The but weird thing it is... It was great. They had movie props from the Dread film, um, helmets you could try on and guns and stand next to the bike and stuff. They had um, loads of different talks. They had live art drawing from certain artists. Were they them. completely ignoring the Stallone Dread? Uh, yeah, I didn't see anything of that there. I did see one badge for sale by a prop company that looked a bit similar, but then it's kind of similar to the ones in the comics so they can get away with that. I think. Mm. <laughs> Um, the weird, the, well, the one thing I took from all of this is you went to a comic book convention and when you took your break from the comic book convention, you went to a comic book shop. Yeah, we, we went broke. to, yeah, we went to Finn Planet. <laughs> um, hated it because it was really expensive. Is it and then particularly the su- they're, su- they're, ve- they're soulless, aren't they? Yeah, they're, Forbidden they're Planet is the corporate bullshit of comic book world. Because we went down the road to Orbital Comics, local little one. But it was banging. They one. actually have back issues. <gasps> Like, it was amazing. And it's not... And you can buy independent comic book artist stuff in Orbital Comics, whereas Forbidden Planet, I looked for seven different comics, walked around for ages looking for them, asked a member of staff, and the member of staff hadn't even heard of them. And they just sell those... uh, And Forbidden Planet's, like, 80% of it's just really expensive. Yeah, like, Mm -hmm. overly expensive. (laughs) <laughs> like overly Actually, overly expensive so, statues yeah. that's the word not even toys statues of Boba Fett but the thing is the Boba Fett looks weird and it doesn't look like Boba Fett it just looks like some guy in cosplay as Boba Fett because he's slightly too fat and it's £800 yeah exactly and it's like, yeah so yeah no it was a good weekend um, my legs hurt because I did a lot of walking a lot of standing but um, we had a lot of fun the guys I went up with they uh they actually do their own podcast, um, so I was kind of uh, just running around with a different podcast po- podcast group. So I feel a bit like I um, cheated on you already, um, but yeah, it was it was good fun. Slut. Yeah, what a slut! But no, anyway, it, was, it was we had was it? we had a good time, and there was a lot of interesting stuff there. And it seems like the direction, the owners, and the editor, and the the guys involved on all levels want to take the company. Um, 
is still the same direction it's always been. And I hope because personally, I think it's the best weekly and monthly comic book that's ever been released. Is it um, still done like in the same way as like the Beano and the Dandy? It's out every week with five, six, four to five different stories in it and oh, that's articles. Fantastic. And then they do the Judge Trip magazine once a month. And that's a, that's an insane amount of content, isn't it? Because oh, yeah. I've, seen, I've got the first, I've got the first volume of just the Judge. You know, the, yeah, yeah, case files of the Judge Dread case files, and and that's like an inch thick. Yeah, and there's like twenty. There's they're into the thirties of that now. I think that's insane. Yeah, they did talk about the fact that they've just bought loads of old other British comics. Um, the rights to reprint a load of other stuff. Well, they didn't say. Or... They didn't say what, mm. but they did talk about it and how they've managed to get the rights to loads of other it's stuff. Dan Dare in the Eagle. Yeah, Dan Dare was also in two thousand AD. Was, was, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they already probably well, they certain um, things. Didn't they yeah. mix the two to because yeah, with the comic industry the doing what it did? Didn't they merge two thousand AD and the Eagle or something at some stage? Um, I, I can't or remember. Just I don't know. Rice? I don't know. I'm not. I'm not too up on that side of things. I've always just read it and enjoyed what's in it. I've never really. It, this weekend to me was learning loads more about the history of what I've loved for so long, and gaining a different perspective on it, and having a chance to chat to some of the people that have influenced me in the artwork I do. So, yeah, I'm going to be doing a lot more reading up on everything about it now because yeah, it was just everything. Everything they talked about, it just seemed like the progression and the direction they're going is going to be interesting. Um, someone did ask a question about whether they're going to do, well, why not do uh, net, get Netflix to do a Dread series? And they said, look, if it works in a way where Netflix follow the rules we have set and want to work with us where we're still involved, then we're up for it. But they haven't, they didn't say that that was. A, definitely going to happen at all so it's interesting they're, they're they're being very faithful to everything that they've made and they're still going every week they've never missed a prog or issue they call them progs yeah um but they've never missed one in the whole time they've been going and actually um i think a couple of weeks ago was uh prog 2017 so that's mental i'm pretty yeah. sure they've been going oh yeah, there's 40 years isn't it yeah so yeah since i was a little yeah. kid i remember the first issues yeah, you know, uh, I've I've got the first two hundred issues myself. How um, much are they worth? They worth anything or not? Um, they some them some of them can be. Um, it depends if you've got like the first three issues came with gifts, so it depends if you got the gifts and stuff. But some people will pay ridiculous amounts of money for them. Some people won't. It depends what condition they're in and. Because it's hard, again, like the Beano and the Dandy, it's hard to keep them in that sort of condition. The old ones, old, yeah, because they were old, like, grotty paper, whereas like the new ones newspapers. are not, you know. Well, it's like old newspaper, paper, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's just, they get wet, don't they? Yeah, but then, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to have been there. And it's very easy to make them look like a porno that you found in the woods when you were 10. <laughs> But yeah, like, what? yeah, porn in the woods, what? <laughs> you know, everyone's first porn knows one they find in the woods, isn't it? In a bush, yeah, bush porn. <laughs> bush porn. Yeah, it's, it's a natural thing in Britain. Bush porn. Have you no, not heard that's of bush... a real term, bush porn. Yeah. Um, cool. So is that it, really? Yeah, that's me. For That was that was, that was was two days ago, and I'm still feeling the pain of getting up at two o'clock in the morning to leave but the high diamond turn that. of turd of Britain to get up to London to... Spend the day there, so but I'm um, oh, yeah, it was worth it. Every second of it was worth it. So yeah, the diamond turd of Britain. Yeah, the literally. Oh, I thought yeah. you were talking about London. I was no, no, the Isle of Wight. If you look at the map of Britain, we are a little Brexit. diamond, little diamond turd hanging off the bottom. We are because the Britain looks like someone sat on the toilet with their legs up on a stool in front of them. Mm. I shall never look at the UK in the same way again. I what. If it was a really dangly hemorrhoid, <laughs> <laughs> or will yeah. that only happen when they put a fixed link in? <laughs> nice. I know white jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, you're not listen, um, if you're listening in in America or something, look us up on a map. The other white's tiny. It's like the size of that small country at the bottom of Malaysia that I can never remember the name of. Shanghai. No, that's not a country. <laughs> Singapore. Singapore. That's yeah. the one. Damn it! It's about the same size as Singapore. Um, yeah, what have you guys been up to anyway? 
What about you, Ross? What you I, t- only two things of real note. I watched a really good documentary on Terry Pratchett that was on the BBC over the weekend. Not that on my Waiting to Die or No, back Back in Black. Back in Black. So they got somebody to it's all about he started recording his memoirs and they left it a bit late, so then they made a little T V show about and it's it's about terry and it goes back and it talks about him when he was young and there's an actor play i probably should know the actor is as well who plays him mm. dresses like him goes back to his like old places talks in his funny little voice which came came from a reconstructive surgery from a bicycle accident he had when he was five no, really? Oh, really? No, no, no. He also talked with the stutter, and he he was the archetypal nerd as well. Yeah. Um, like complete misfit at school, and his head teacher was really horrible and said, um, he wouldn't amount to anything, and that really spurred him on to write. But the most embarrassing thing, as somebody who's not on forty, he his first book was published when he was seventeen. Wow. Really? Wow. Yeah. During the 90s, his books were the most stolen books as well, as yeah. in literally by a country mile. Luckily, like, he was writing three, two to three books a year. But yeah, that was really good. It was sad and, and, and just horrible. Did it mention about um, Good Omens by any chance? Yeah, Neil Gaiman was on there. Um, they didn't talk about the, the TV TV show. series, yeah, the making one, which um, okay. uh, is probably hopefully going to be out next year. Rihanna Pratchett, his daughter, was on there. Um, she wrote the she wrote the two new Tomb Raider reboots, not the movie. Oh, right. She wrote the games. Um, yeah. Ah, okay. Um, and yeah, they go to a Discworld convention, which that's as as a huge giant nerd, that was terrifying because some things just get you have to bring that extra level of nerd, don't you? Oh um, yeah, there was some angry disc, nerds. A, disc, but... a Discworld convention yeah. probably gets that extra level. They weren't angry; they're just on. Oh no, two thousand eighteen convention. Like, like there's yeah. some lovely people there, but I was chatting to one of the artists, and uh, some quite aggressive nerd came over and was sort of very intent on making sure he got every person in the room's signature in a special book in exactly the right place and was quite rude to him and it it was it wasn't like that he was autistic or something the guy was just rude um if you're that guy fuck you yeah yeah he was just yeah um, rude rude. guy at convention go fuck yourself and his little jizz book of signatures Whereas all the other people were really nice and were very polite to the artist and waited while they were chatting to people and then, you know, there. Uh, uh, nerd, yeah, nerds yeah. are scary at conventions. It's quite, it's quite easy. It's just the rule of thumb is just don't be a cunt. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, wow. so that was that. And then the only other thing I've done is Massive hit this seriously. weird little bit of not, what, not knowing what video games to play. Like Ooh. wanting to play a game. Yeah, but you when you sometimes you come off the back of two really big sort of triple A games like I just played The Witcher three, and then followed that up with Dying Light, which again is a really good game and massive. And I've just hit this bit where now I don't know what to do for the next three weeks. Do you know what I do when I have that problem with gaming? Don't play a game. No, I if if I, if I feel I need to play a game and I'm at that point, I just put something like Red Dead Redemption on and just ride around in the countryside on a horse. <laughs> I literally, because of the time of the year, because of loads of digital sales and stuff, I've, I've probably bought about six or seven games that, that cost next to nothing and played them all for about an hour and done that. You played Bro Force? Yeah, I've got that. Oh, it's amazing. Um, but yeah, like uh, Sniper Elite V3, I bought that. Rebellion. For about an hour, so right. um, Dark Souls, which is this, if you don't know, this is, there's series mm-hmm. of games that are really really like they're not hard they've just got they've got a very steep learning curve and i just, oh, I just can't be fucked no my mate not plays all of those him and his wife play all of them and they're, as, although they're interesting games to watch and the folklore in them and the weird things that can happen and the weird things you can find without knowing that it's in there because it's just not side posted to you is interesting i don't think i've got the patience for a game like that they all seem like the learning curve is way too steep for me to bother. I am so behind with games, but I have seen Dark Souls videos and people doing time trial stuff with them, which I think is quite fascinating. I've seen a few of those. 
because they're only about 12 minutes long. Yeah. People getting up Lots to of people the game. Yeah. 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 It's really like, we should, um, I should bring it around or something, we should just play it. Because it's just, you'd just be like, fucking, this game is so unforgiving. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, you have a sword and a shield, and if you don't walk around with your shield up, or, like, the game will punish you for absolutely anything, but anything <laughs> it punishes you for is not the game's fault, it's your fault. Yeah, yeah. As soon as you just stop lift it, holding the button down to bring your shield up and walking around with your shield up, you'll just get complacent and walk around the corner, and then they'll just be a fucking skeleton there, and you'll just go, <laughs> and down, and you just be like, fuck. And down. Um, because that's it, you lose everything with those yeah. games, don't you? You don't just like go, oh, that's a shame, I respawn. You like go back and have to start a whole You have to get back here. to where you die to yeah. recover the souls that you die with. Like, yeah, it's fucking to do with campfires or something, yeah. I seem to remember. But yeah, we should probably play Yeah, because there's quite a few of the so. games, isn't there? And there's like the Dark Souls and the Demon Souls. And, and I, they're all kind of linked. But yeah, they're all made by the same well. company yeah. from software. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's all I've been doing this week is I'm not watching The Crown, games. but I'm not going to talk about that because it's not the podcast now. Fair enough. But it's very good. Watch it. I am going to, it's on my to watch list actually. Watch it with the missus. It's, it's a good thing to watch with your girlfriend. On to you. What's Chris been up to? What's new with me? Yeah. I hear you ask. I watched the, the new Martin Scorsese movie, Silence. Is it good? It is not for everyone. It's going to bore the tits off of some people, and the subject matter is probably going to be a bit difficult for some people. It's very what's, religious. What's it very, about? There's this priest, he's gone on a pilgrimage to Japan. 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 And um, disappeared. And mm. two of his students, who are very, very fond of him, um, receive a letter from him saying that there's been trouble, but that letter's about five years old. Oh, damn. And... Um, yeah, so they go off and try and find him, and it's them trying to desperately keep themselves undercover and, and not be found out by the Japanese government that they're there. Is right, this the um, one with Andrew Garfield? Garfield, Andrew. And Garfield yeah. I'll have to Is it worth you. watching? It's it's very spiritual. I mean, at the end of the day, if, if for people of faith, it's going to be a very good movie, I would have thought. But... Um, is it is it quite... Someone said it's quite almost torturous in places. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's got, very brutal. It and is very not brutal. enjoyable in um, that sense. And uh, those moments are really drawn out as well. Oh um, right, it's okay. kind of not completely unflinching, but you know, it's a very good Scorsese movie. I I guess you could have cut it down, but as as a passion piece, do you need to? I don't think so. And I think Scorsese's he's got the right his, uh, career where he gets to do what he wants when yeah, he wants. Absolutely. Guy. It's the man who directed Goodfellas. He I know. can do anything he wants. Absolutely. I really want to see, and it's, it's on my list for this week, actually, is the movie about um, the mob person infiltrating the police and the police guy infiltrating the mob. Uh, the departed. Departed. That's, again, it's fantastic. Yeah. He's, I could talk about him all day. He's just that's like, not a new film, is he's it? He's the best no. living oh, right, director. Yeah, that's a great he film. is categorically the greatest living director. Bold statement. Yeah. I like the guy who did Mad Max and Happy Feet. <laughs> yeah. I do not like that director. I think that Mad Max was actually a fluke. I think what, the original? The most, the most late, the most recent. Yeah, right. Recent? Oh, I don't know. I think, because he said that he wanted to do certain things that the studio wouldn't let him do, so he had to be more clever with the art style for each section of the film. Right. And I think that's why a lot of people thought, like a lot of people who complained and said it wasn't, it wasn't very good, <laughs> were because they were expecting a certain thing, and the ones, the people that thought it was amazing, got something different. I'm kind of in. I, I think it's a great film, um, but I can see the things that he wanted to do because he wanted to have each section of the film in one color. And Hollywood just went, no, that's too RT. People won't understand because of the messages he was trying to tell. Um, so he had to kind of put a tone of colour in each, but still had to do everything normally. His name was being banded around for the Batman. Mm. And I'm kind of secretly glad that he didn't get it. It's, I don't think he'd work well with that sort no, of film. No, not at all. I don't um, think it worked well with any sort of film, to be fair. I, I don't know. Happy, <laughs> happy Feet is Happy Feet, you know? I hate it. Mad Max is Mad Max. Like, I, I, I like them. I think they, they do what they need to do for that character. They're crazy, they're mad, and they're 
Full of Max. Ma- making a statement on stuff. Each one of the Mad Max films has a very political and social statement. I that suppose. Makes sense. I've probably seen them way past their time, mm. to be fair. Yeah. There we are. I also watched um, Hell or High Water this week, which is another massive recommendation. Which Hell you... or High Water? Yeah, it's a... Um, it's a cops chasing robbers drama. So uh, Jeff Bridges and his partner are after these two young bucks who have been robbing banks out in the you know back ends of Liam, America. Liam near the... Hemsworth and um, but are they... someone else. Oh, Chris it? Pine. Chris Pine, yeah. Liam yeah, Hemsworth and Chris, Chris Pine, Pine isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, they they are chasing them toward the Mexican border, I think, or that yeah, certainly in that area. They're Texans, yeah. Texas Rangers, I think, and. Uh, the relationship between Jeff Bridges' character and his partner mm. is fantastic. The quips between them, the scripting of it is beautiful. It's an amazing film. Awesome. Cool. I'll have to give it a watch. It did look, it did look interesting when I saw a uh, write-up about it. I think it's one of those little unsung heroes of the year, actually. Mm. I think uh, it may have got a nomination for an Oscar, but I'm not 100% certain. So that's about it. Should we wrap it up? guys yeah that's that's us for this week thank you very much for listening and uh you can find this podcast on all good uh podcast services and youtube and you can find our facebook page uh smooth with the crew on facebook and we'll put links to everything we've been talking about below in the show notes in um, the, the show notes thank you for listening and we shall be back next week thank you very much good night Bye. Well, I ended up on kevinspacey.com. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Yeah, That's the yeah. sample to go after the end of the episode. We're actually right. trying to get onto ryanreynolds.com. <laughs> <laughs>